Sean and Diddy Coombs' mansions in Los Angeles and Miami have been torn apart in a sex trafficking probe which saw armored trucks, helicopters, and swarms of federal agents descend on his properties. This comes as lawsuits against him are mounting, with claimants accusing the hip-hop star of trafficking, sexual abuse, drugging, and domestic violence. Homeland Security released footage of the raid, showing his bedroom strewn with documents, pill bottles, and safes that were blown open. The 54-year-old star says he is the victim of a quote-unquote witch hunt, and it is now believed he's fled to Antigua. Documents from one $30 million lawsuit have also named a number of stars, including the Duke of Sussex, Prince Harry. After the raids, footage has resurfaced of Usher talking about the time he spent at Diddy's mansion when he was 13 years old. Hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, and it was, <laughs> but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say you that. <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh huh. And I didn't necessarily understand uh -huh. it. Disgusting. Joining me now is showbiz journalist and television presenter, Rebecca Toomey. Bex, what is the situation for Diddy now and should we have seen this coming? This is a really awful, dark, horrible story to even be talking about. You know, these are multiple allegations against him, all of which he does deny, but they're stacking up against him and some are from women, and some are from a producer he's worked with very recently, a male producer. So. It doesn't look great. It doesn't look great either that he's not stayed in the US. He's not kind of, you know, as, as, as appears to be at the moment, he's just released to say, that statement you said about saying it's a witch hunt. But I think with a lot of these stories, industry people know for a long time, they hear rumors, there's murmurings, there might be someone on the internet releasing some footage, making claims. And then as momentum gains, suddenly someone will come out. And this time it was, it was his ex-partner, Cassie, and she spoke in November, filed this huge lawsuit. They dated for 10 years, making all kinds of allegations against him. There she is, quite the stellar Cassie. Um, now, she was going after a lot of money um, from Diddy, and he settled with her pretty much straight away? With the next day. Which is unheard of. Absolutely unheard of. It's completely, you know, absolutely so dramatic that the claim she'd made against him, multiple claims of abuse, that she was sex trafficked, mm. that she was in a very abusive relationship. She was in her teens when they met and he was in his late 30s. He did sign her to his uh, record label. It just feels like a massive indifference of power and that it was settled so quickly. It does feel that they moved very quickly and very reactive. But to be honest, with some of these cases in recent times, Lizzo, very popular singer, she was accused by some of her dancers of sexual harassment. Now, it's not on the scale of what we're talking about here with um, P. Diddy, but she settled that lawsuit. It settled out of court. So this is what seems to happen now because these cases can gain such momentum on social media and they can just blow up and they can destroy careers. Yeah, and I, obviously P. Diddy's lawyers have denied all the allegations. Yeah. Um, but if someone accused me of something, no matter if it's something small like theft, I don't know if you saw Eborn earlier, my legal advisor, yeah. he suggested me thieving, uh, right. or whether it's something more serious like the stuff that Diddy's facing, I am not going to settle. If I haven't done it, if I've done anything wrong- You've got enough money to settle then. I've got no money to settle, <laughs> that's a fact. But you know, we saw it with, with Prince Andrew, he paid a few million pounds to a woman he'd never met before mm -hmm. to, to settle. And again, mm -hmm. Prince Andrew denies any wrongdoing. He denies even having met that woman. Yeah. But Usher was 13 years old. Why was a 13 year old having sleepovers with a man who at the time was in his 40s and Justin Bieber, video footage yes. of Bieber saying the same thing. Bieber was a 13 year old and Diddy's on camera saying, I want to have a 48 hour sleepover with him. Yeah. It's a bit weird. It's a bit weird. It's, it's, it's very, very uncomfortable. And what we have to remember is we're going back in time now and I'm not making any justifications that we're going back in time, but it was a different time. It was the late 90s and the noughties. And uh, I'm not uh, defending anything. Well, well, Hang well, on, well, well, let me finish, well, please let me well. finish. Whoa. <laughs> the situation was that P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, as he was then known, was a mentor to a lot of younger artists. And I'm sure they looked up to him. And as Usher was talking about, he was just 13 when he moved in in New York. Now, what kind of parent lets their teenage child move in with an adult male that was so popular with so much money? It just reeks of inappropriateness. And Usher was later asked in interviews, would you let your child move in with P. Diddy? He said, no. Well, there you go. I wouldn't let my kid move in with um, Michael Jackson either. And he was doing, it, yeah. he was doing yeah. it way before Diddy found it cool. But again, Diddy and his team deny anything. Um, how's Jennifer Lopez implicated in this? 
Well, she's not implicated, that she was a, a former partner of P. Diddy. She dated him? They dated him, um, it was around sort of the late 90s, early noughties, and he was very much sort of championed as making her the superstar she is today. But what actually happened back in the day um, is that they were both arrested after a shooting in a nightclub. And before the legal case came to fruition, Jennifer Lopez did actually end that relationship because of the stigma around being, you know, associated with, you know, a person such as him. And in her recent documentary that's just come out about Jennifer Lopez's many relationships, she did talk about uh, an abusive relationship. Now, there isn't the implication at this moment in time that it was P. Diddy, but obviously fans have speculated very heavily mm -hmm. that, you know, that wasn't a very healthy relationship, shall we say, for her. Who else? maybe implicated in this uh, this whole Diddy storm. I'm hearing names like Beyonce and Jay-Z. Yes, it's sort the of... The golden <laughs> couple. It can't be Beyonce, and now her beehive are going to come after me for even <laughs> insinuating that she's connected to this case at all. Well, I think we have to be very careful at this moment in time not to kind of implicate not anyone. Not me, mate. This well... is the independent public of JJ. I say what I want <laughs> around here. Beyonce can't touch me. Well, JJ, <laughs> you can say what you like, but I think just... just... At this moment... I want you to say it. Well, I'm not going to say anything, anything that implicates, implicates anyone at this moment in time. But what happens with some of these situations, as we've seen previously, is that anyone who's been associated by association, whether they were at one of these alleged sex parties or not, as we've seen with Prince Harry, has been named on a list of someone who potentially was used to lure other people in through connections and power mm -hmm. and whatnot in these situations. But I do think there's going to be a lot of, oh, well, I had a picture taken with P. Diddy, so around that time, could you be implicated? Not of the Prince Andrew picture scandal, because I know that's what you're just going to bring. I can see, well, the, see you dying. I was up. just thinking, actually, about Prince Harry, because yeah. he's he's actually named in this uh, lawsuit mm -hmm. twice. I don't yes. know how many, page, how many hundred pages there are in this lawsuit. Seven, I think it's just over 70, Se 75. 75 pages, yeah. and, and he's named twice. So why is he named? What's he been doing? So he hasn't done anything at all, as far as we're aware. What, what the legal papers say, this is from the producer who's just been working with P. Diddy. He filed this uh, lawsuit in just in February, and he is claiming that there were lots of parties, sex parties, that um, P. Diddy organised, and he used names to kind of lure other people in to engage in some of this, you know, potentially illegal activity. So Prince Harry was someone that he would say, oh, you know, I know Prince Harry, he had a picture taken with him, once in 2007, yeah. and suddenly these names are being used. But this is what people do in positions of power. They lure in other mechanics to attract more powerful people. You think P. Diddy would say to people, I've got Prince Harry, the guy whose who's todger got frozen that time, I've got him coming <laughs> to a party. And that would make people want to go to the party? That would make me want to say, no, nah, I'm, I'm all right, mate. Well, well, I'm I, busy, thanks. I think for a lot of Harry haters, yes, people would want to go. <laughs> but remember, in the US, royal connections of, you know, it's very exciting. It's very, you know, it's what happened with potentially Prince Andrew and Epstein. It was, I know a royal, I can get you royal connections. Maybe not one of our favourite royals, but I think that's just the power of, the power of celebrity and by association is actually incredibly important for people who want to be, maybe someone's got a lot of wealth, but they're not very cool. They want to go to a party where there's lots of attractive women, there's cool music people. Oh, and there's a prince too. A fair dues, but I think it's um, unfair for the press or anyone in media to, to be, tying Harry to to this and implicating him at all when he literally had a picture taken with yeah. P. Diddy at a concert for his late mother. Yeah. And, by the way, William was also there and yep. is pictured it, it, within the same the same time frame. Yep. I, it, this is why we have to be very careful by association at the moment. There are rumours of different people, you know, high-profile people, you know, being associated with this. But we have to be very careful because now in these days you take a picture with someone and someone could say anything about you and make any claim about you and all the evidence you would have is that photo. I mean, people should be more concerned about the fact that Harry's related to Prince Andrew. That, that to be of more concern than anything else. There's, you know, That's Andrew, Andrew Harry, was hanging yeah. out with a known pedophile, knowing yes. that the guy's a pedophile in Epstein. Yep. That should be a bigger issue, you, you might think, rather than Harry having a picture backstage. Absolutely. Anyway, let's talk about everyone's favourite topic, Meghan Markle. Oh, no. <laughs> and this, this rebrand. So what's she going to be selling? So she's going to be... She's, she, because she initially had a lifestyle blog. The TIG. The TIG. It made about £80,000 a year at, the, at its peak, I, I believe. I mean, that's not to be sniffed at. No, you know? I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take less than that. <laughs> um, but she's, she's rebranding things. She wants to do a bit of a Gwyneth Paltrow-esque... Goose, sell which is, vagina which smelling candles. It's basically, in the mm. nicest possible way, when celebrities start running out of work, be it <sighs> films, modelling contracts, come on, it's very true, don't do the face. They <sighs> then decide to launch a lifestyle brand, which is a very broad term for, I could sell a candle, <laughs> I could sell a tea towel. And the power of celebrities is that people will buy a tea towel if Meghan Markle says... 
buy this. That's what's very concerning. She'll make to me. millions off this. She'll make millions, right? Well, yeah, I think it's about time they maybe perhaps didn't sort of trade off their royal connections and maybe actually did some work. It might be nice to see. Wait, if they did some work, what are you talking yeah, about? What I are you know. talking about? We'd have to educate them perhaps in in new ways to make cash. <laughs> wow, on that bombshell, you calling Harry and Meghan lazy. <laughs> Rebecca Toomey, thank you very much for your time. <laughs>